Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is Pramod and this is another Comsha Network Plus practice test series. And this part is also very helpful to pass the Network Plus exam. So let's go to the questions. And this is a question. A technician is troubleshooting a servers with high CPU uses while trying to connect. The technician needs to open a port for remote access. So which of the following ports should the technician open? Option A, 443, option B, 3321, option C, 8080, and option D, 5900. And the correct answer for this question is option D, 5900. So let's check the explanation for this answer. And the explanation is the technician should open port 5900 for remote access. Port 5900, so this port is associated with VNC, Virtual Network Computing, a protocol that allows for remote desktop access and control of a computer. So that's why the correct answer is D5900. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is a network security engineer is responding to a security incident. The engineer suspects that an attacker use an authorized administrator account to make configuration changes to the boundary firewall. So which of the following should the network security engineer review? Option A, network traffic logs. Option B, audit logs. Option C, CC logs. Option D, event logs. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer is option B, audit logs. So let's check the explanations. So audit logs, so these logs specifically track user actions and system changes, making them ideal for detecting unauthorized modifications to firewall configurations, especially when an authorized account is used. They can detail who made the changes, what was changed and when it happened. So providing crucial information for the investigation. So that's why the current answer is B, audit logs. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, a system administrator has two network switches that need to be cabled together via copper cabling. So neither of the switches support MDIX. So which of the following types of cables should the administrator use? Option A, straight. Option B, crossover. Option C, patch cable. Option D, rollover. And the correct answer for this question is option B, crossover. So let's check the explanation. So MDIX medium dependent interface crossover. This is a feature on many network switches that automatically detects the required cable type straight through or crossover and adjust accordingly. If both switches support MDIX, you can use a straight through cable. So that's why the crossover cable when connecting two devices of the same type like switch to switch, crossover cable is needed if they do not have a MDIX. So this cable manually crosses the transmit and receive wires to ensure proper communication. So that's why the correct answer is B, crossover. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is, a network engineer wants to establish a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel using a protocol that allows for both data confidentiality and authentication. So which of the following is the best choice? Option A, IKE. Option B, H. Option C, ESP, option D, IPsec. And the correct answer for this question is option D, IPsec. So let's check the explanation. So IPsec, Internet Protocol Security, this is a suite of protocols that encompasses both authentication header and encapsulating security payload ESP. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option D, IPsec. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, which of the following is a physical topology in which all devices are connected to each other? Option A, bus. Option B, ring. Option C, mesh. Option D, star. And the correct answer for this question is option C, mesh. So let's check the explanation. The physical topology where all devices are connected to each other is mesh. And a mesh topology connects every device directly to every other device on the network, creating a wave of connections. So that's why the correct answer is C, mesh. So let's move to the next question. 
Next question is which of the following most likely occurs when an attacker is between the target and a legitimate server? Option A IP spoofing, option B VLAN hooping, option C ROC DSCP, option D on path attack. And the correct answer for this question is option D on path attack. So let's check the explanation. An on-path attack describes the scenario where an attacker positions themselves between two communicating devices like a client and a server to intercept and potentially modify the data being exchanged. Therefore, the correct answer is D, on-path attack. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, a technician is troubleshooting an incident regarding a fiber that is connected to buildings. The technician suspects a break may have occurred midway along the route. So which of the following tools should a technician use to verify the point where the break might be located? Option A, loopback adapter. Option B, OTDR. Option C, cable tester. Option D, new SFEs. And the correct answer for this question is option B, OTDR. So let's check the explanation. An optical time domain reflectometer OTDR is specifically designed to detect and locate faults within the fiber optic cables. It works by sending a laser pulse through the fiber and measuring the reflected light back from any imperfections or breaks in the cable. The time it takes for the reflected light to return indicates the distance to the fault, allowing the technician to pinpoint the location of the break along the fiber. So that's why the correct answer is B, OTDR. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, a company is moving into a new office and a network technician is setting up a new wireless solution. So which of the following is the first step the technician should take? Option A, perform a site survey. Option B, order equipment. Option C, create an SSID. Option D, create network diagrams. And the correct answer for this question is option A, perform a site survey. So let's check the explanation. The first step a network technician should take when setting up a new wireless solution in a new office is to perform a site survey. A site survey involves accessing the physical environment to determine the best placement of wireless access points for optimal coverage and signal strength. Considering factors like building layout, potential interference and the signal strength throughout the space. That's why the correct answer is A. Perform a site survey. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, a technician is configuring a bandwidth monitoring tool that supports payloads of 1600 bytes. So which of the following should the technician configure for this tool? Option A, LACP. Option B, flow control. Option C, port mirroring. Option D, jumbo frames. And the correct answer for this question is option D, jumbo frames. So let's check the explanations. So jumbo frames are Ethernet frames larger than the standard 1500 bytes. Since the question mentions a bandwidth monitoring tool supporting payloads of 1600 bytes. So which is larger than the standard size. Configuring jumbo frames allows for the transmission of larger data packets. So that's why the correct answer is D, jumbo frames. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is, which of the following authentication methods require a user to enter a password and a scan fingerprint? Option A, single sign-on. Option B, Kerberos. Option C, multi-factor. Option D, network access control. And the correct answer for this question is option C, multi-factor. So let's check the explanation. So multi-factor authentication, MFA, requires users to use more than one method of authentication to verify their identity, such as password and fingerprint scan. So that's why the correct answer is C, multi-factor. So I hope you're enjoying this video. So this part has been completed. Study hard, good luck, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe the channel to see more video like this. I will upload next part shortly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.